of this story. Oscar Pistorius could be free within weeks if the parole board decides to release him halfway through his 13-year sentence for murder. The Olympic and Paralympic sprinter was sentenced for killing his girlfriend, Riva Stienkamp, at his high security home back on Valentine's Day in 2013. Well, for some insight into this parole process, I'm joined now by criminal defense attorney William Booth. Uh, William, good afternoon. Welcome to today. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, what are the key requirements for a successful parole application? Uh, good afternoon. Um, well, the parole hearing has to consider a number of factors. They would be the issue of rehabilitation. Has the offender rehabilitated? Uh, has he or she completed various courses that the Department of Correctional Services offer? Uh, has he got uh, an address? Is he going to work? Can he be monitored? And then also they've got to look at the seriousness of the offence and the um, attitude of the community or the family of the victim. So the hearing and or any other factors that might come up, because each uh, hearing could be different from the other, because a person is sentenced to different uh, periods of imprisonment and different factors come into play. So um, the hearing will have to look at all of that. It might determine that um, a decision is not made and postpone the decision for another period of time and request various other reports, input from let's say, uh, social workers at the Department of Correctional Services, uh, mediation between the victim, uh, victim's family and, and the offender. But, uh, you, you know, it's not uh, going to be necessarily that there will be a decision made. It might be a determination that they've got to reassess things in another period of time. Uh, the Correctional Services Act stipulates that any offender may be considered for parole, as I say, I stress the word may be considered for parole, after serving 50% uh, or half of their sentence. Um, and then they look at all these factors that uh, you know, I've just mentioned. Okay, so while he may be uh, uh, eligible in terms of the, the, the law, as you've just quoted there, uh, what other grounds, other than the key requirements you've made, could River Stenkamp's family present in opposing a parole? Well, look, you know, obviously that it's a serious offence and, and um, the, the fact of uh, rehabilitation. So the Department of Correctional Services will have to submit a whole profile file to the, to the parole hearing in which they will have to set out all the programmes that he has um, completed within prison his behavior within prison and, uh, you know, looking at is he ripe for release on parole, the address where he's going to stay, work that he might get, and then has he got a support system within the community? So if you look at all of those factors, I, I would say, you know, mostly are positive for uh, Oscar Pistorius' release on parole. but. And again, one can't necessarily just be swayed by the feelings of the family. The hearing has got to look at all of these factors. They could say, well, you know, it's too serious an offence. He has not admitted his guilt. Uh, you know, his version is still that he thought it was an intruder in the bathroom. And he has therefore not, um, you know, strongly enough uh, come forward with the issue of, of remorse. Um, but, you know, it's not, if he hasn't shown remorse, it doesn't mean to say he can't be eligible for release. Yeah, I mean, this was a high profile murder case that uh, grabbed the imagination of, of the country and all of us uh, getting to know the likes of prosecutor then at the time, uh, Harry Nell, and, and a lot of controversy around it. He was sentenced, uh, Oscar Pistorius was sentenced to a particular term and that was then changed and increased to, to 13 years that is currently serving uh, for, for the murder of, of Rivas Dienkamp. I mean, the people are going to be watching this parole application very closely, uh, uh, William, and we've seen some recent ones which were questionable. Yes, no, absolutely. I don't think it's just South Africa. I think uh, this was a case that gripped the world. 
Um, so, the, you know, the world's press are, are, are following this matter very, very closely. I, I, I was contacted a little while back by the New York Times to ask for some input with regard to parole in South Africa. But the parole board must look at the matter, as a court must, objectively, not be swayed by one or other factor. And, you know, because it's high profile, the public know about it, doesn't mean to say he can't be released on parole. Because with the release on parole, the parole board can set very strict requirements with regard to his release, that he may have to still continue with various uh, programs, rehabilitation programs. He has to report to the Department of Correctional uh, Services from time to time, that he must engage with them. You know, they can set any number of conditions with regard to his, uh, with his release. So it's not that he's going out there and he can just do what he's like. Maybe he can't travel. He's got to stay within a certain area. Um, but the, the, the hearing must look at all these factors and balance it, because if they don't, then Pasturis has a right to take the decision on review. Let's say they don't release him on parole, he can take that on review. There's an internal system, there's a parole review system within the Department of Correctional Services, and then eventually he could take this matter to court, to the High Court, Supreme Court of Appeal, or if constitutional issues arise with regard to any decision that the hearing makes, even to the, you know, even to the constitutional court. Yeah, so it's going to be a, a, a very uh, tough one in a way, but as you indicated earlier, William, if the various requirements, he's meeting them, there will be nothing this time around uh, for, for this parole board not to grant Oscar Pistorius parole unless, as you say, they could be wanting to determine other factors in future. Yes, absolutely. And look, we don't know what his profile is within prison. I mean, we don't know has he completed all these various courses, uh, rehabilitation courses. What is the report from, let's say, the psychologist? that may have seen him from uh, the head of the prison and any other wardens. How has he performed? How is he, you know, has he cooperated? Is he fit for being released on, on parole? But I mean, if I look at Oscar Paturi, the stories, the crime and all the other, all the factors, I think, you know, he would probably pick most of the blocks. But as I said earlier, has he shown enough remorse? And no, he hasn't. He hasn't admitted his guilt. So the family want him as any family of, of any victim in, in this kind of crime, want the person who's sentenced to at least acknowledge that he's committed an offence. Okay, so, thank you. But again, the hearing can't delay it indefinitely and say, well, he's got to serve his full 13 years and, and five months that he was eventually sentenced to by the Supreme Court of Appeal because he hasn't shown remorse. Because I think the public have to realise that one has to look at factors objectively and what, not one factor must override the other yeah. factor. The public will say, you know, he must stay inside till the end. And that's it. He shouldn't even be, you know, he should have got a heavier sentence than what he, what he got. So people say that, but they must realize the law is a process. It has to follow rules and regulations. The high courts have set down requirements that must be followed by the parole board, the parole board itself has set down certain requirements. You know, my view on parole boards is it should actually be better formulated in the sense of who's on the parole. So one never knows in advance who's there. So the applicant can have a lawyer present uh, and obviously present his case, and the victim's family can have a lawyer present, present their okay. case. And those hearing the, uh, the application for release on parole, considering it, should be people with the necessary skills to look at all these factors and to determine the proper release and you know date for the person and if okay. there are going to be any conditions. Thank you very much for your time and uh, insights this afternoon here, William Booth, criminal defence attorney, as uh, we preview the fact that tomorrow, Friday, the parole board will be considering an application for parole by Paralympian Oscar Pistorius.